So remember that all of this is going on up there in the stratosphere. All those reactions where ozone and oxygen are taking the hit, this is all 9 to 20 miles out or 15 to 30 uh, k kilometers. And that's the maximum concentration of ozone in Earth's atmosphere, in all those regions of Earth's atmosphere. We do have a tiny bit of ozone down here in the troposphere from air pollutant, the air pollutant, but this ozone down here in the troposphere does not move up there into the stratosphere or vice versa. They're two separate populations. So the average amount of ozone around over Earth is about 300 Dobson units. And we need that. We need that ozone up there. Uh, it protects Earth from UV energy. Scientists measuring ozone concentrations noticed a seasonal thinning of ozone in the stratosphere called the ozone hole. Now this is uh, focusing on the South Pole. This is Antarctica in this 1979. And this ozone concentration in Dobson units is a number that relates to color. So green means approximately 300. So in 1988, this is still over the South Pole, over Antarctica. This is blue, which means it's about 200. In 1998, more blue and larger, about 200. And this is Dobson units of ozone. And then by 2008, this was even larger and not zero ozone, but about a third to half of the amount of ozone that would be present all over the rest of the Earth. You can see here in this view of the entire Earth that most of the Earth is green. So that means about 300 Dobson units of ozone. But over the South Pole is where this was about a third to half, 150, 200 from the blue color, um, which is a lower concentration of ozone. And this is only seasonal. This actually happens from this date around September, October every year that this seasonal thinning, uh, less a lowered concentration of ozone is noticed over the South Pole. So this graph shows this destruction of ozone over time and this is on the x-axis, so from 1980 to basically current. Uh, this is the ozone concentrations on the y-axis in Dobson units, and this is ozone that's measured at Antarctica over the South Pole. So about 200 in 1980 and then all the way down to about 100 in current times, current uh, more current years. And so scientists first noticed this destruction of ozone, and this is, has upset the natural balance of the Chapman cycle. Ozone is formed and destroyed every single day, but remember that's a cycle. This is outside of that cycle. So it was known that ozone was naturally destroyed by other factors. Uh, this is water molecules that go up into the atmosphere and break apart into free radicals, but that's been happening for centuries and millions of years. Something beyond natural sources was responsible for destroying the stratospheric ozone at this pace. So scientists started doing research to find out what was destroying ozone beyond the natural decomposition reactions. This graph on the lower left shows what's called the smoking gun. So on the x-axis is degrees south latitude. That's basically a location on Earth. And on the y-axis is in blue the amount of stratospheric ozone, how much ozone is in the stratosphere. And this on the other x-axis in red is the amount of chlorine in the stratosphere. So what this graph is trying to show us is not a time on the x-axis, um, but a location, remember, and this is at this particular location, 69 degrees south latitude, which is basically the South Pole. Um, the amount of ozone is decreased when the amount of chlorine is increased, okay? So this amount of chlorine, the concentration of chlorine, parts per billion, affects the amount of ozone in, inversely. So chlorine causes less ozone. We know that ozone is in the stratosphere, but what's the chlorine doing in the stratosphere? So this is showing what are called chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs for short. So CFCs are present all over Earth. 
They're non-toxic, non-flammable, they're inexpensive and widely available. And they're mostly around because of air conditioners. So air conditioners in homes and air conditioners in cars. These uh, are CFCs that have been around since air conditioning began around the 1930s. And this is something that was not understood until the 70s that these chlorofluorocarbons are gases that when released into the atmosphere break apart in the presence of sunlight. Um, same, same thing that UV hits this molecule and causes a chlorine atom to come off. This chlorine atom is not a regular chlorine atom. Uh, chlorine is naturally present as the diatomic Cl2 um, because chlorine is in family 7A and those are molecular elements in family 7A, the halogen. So chlorine as a single atom with this dot is very reactive. This is uh, called a uh, free radical when you have a single electron uh, on a single atom and this is very reactive. And so what chlorine does when it's uh, up there in the atmosphere is it reacts with ozone and causes it to break down into oxygen. So this is a couple of reactions here. Chlorine attaches to an ozone creates oxygen, and then ultimately um, you don't have any ozone. So these CFC molecules are all over the planet and they cause the destruction of ozone because of this production of this free radical chlorine. A little bit more about chlorofluorocarbons is that these are names that you may have heard of in air conditioners, Freon 11 and Freon 12. So these are called chlorofluorocarbons, which means there's chlorine, there's fluorine, and there's carbon. And this is another, there's chlorine, there's only two here, and there's two fluorines, and there's carbon. So this is the structural formula showing the atoms and how they're bonded. This is the chemical formula showing what atoms and how many. And this is the chemical name, trichlorofluoromethane or dichlorodifluoromethane. So these, when UV hits these molecules, either this one or this one, a chlorine atom comes off and it's a free radical. It's a chlorine atom that has a lone pair electron. And so this is the chlorine radical and this can come from either the Freon 11 or Freon 12 that's up there in the atmosphere just because these chlorofluorocarbons are gases that make their way up there into the stratosphere. So there's ozone depletion by these chlorine radicals. And these are the reactions that we'll go over in the worksheet. But basically the chlorine radical, this uh, free radical, this chlorine with one lone pair electron, attacks ozone and produces oxygen. And all of that's happening up in the stratosphere. The ozone depletion reactions are separate. They're different from the ozone destruction and formation reactions in the Chapman cycle that we just looked at. These ozone depletion reactions only deplete ozone and that's due to the outside source of the chlorofluorocarbons and the chlorine free radicals. We'll review all these word equations and write them as balanced equations in this worksheet.